dear visitors, today we are celebrating the 8th of March, International Women's Day. This is a global day celebrating the cultural, economical, scientific and political achievements of women. The main topic of our discussion is the power of women in the 21st century. Very interesting, provocative and hot topic not only for today. We will discuss with five women ambassadors from five continents, five topics, and we will present you five points of view, similar or different. Let's see. Our host today is Her Excellency Zakia Elmidawi. Ambassador of the Kingdom of Morocco to the Republic of Bulgaria and Dean of the African, Arabic and French speaking ambassadors. Let me to present you our guest ambassadors. Her Excellency Maria Fontenelle Reis, Ambassador of Brazil. Her Excellency Mariam Aftab, Ambassador of Pakistan. Her Excellency Natasha Bergil. Ambassador of Slovenia and Her Excellency Lina Umar, Ambassador of Iraq. Her Excellency Zakia Umidawi, Ambassador of the Kingdom of Morocco to the Republic of Bulgaria and Dean of the African, Arabic and French speaking Ambassadors. Her Excellency, who is an economist, has a bachelor's degree in economics and accounting, a bachelor's degree in financial and commercial sciences, and a speciality in marketing and distribution. She has been working in the diplomatic field since 1982. Before being posted as ambassador in Bulgaria, she was director of multilateral cooperation in the international economic affairs at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, African Cooperation and Moroccan Living Abroad of the Kingdom of Morocco. Before she worked as head of the Economic and Commercial Organization and Conferences Division at the Department of Multilateral Cooperation, in International Economic Affairs and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and also as head of the Department of Bodies and Conferences related to multilateral trading and financial systems. She was also posted as Chargé d'Affaires and Deputy Head of the Permanent Mission of Morocco in Geneva. Ambassador Maria Edilovisa Fontenelle Reis is an experienced career diplomat. She assumed her post as ambassador of the Federative Republic of Brazil to the Republic of Bulgaria after serving as the permanent delegate to Brazil to UNESCO. She has also held high-level positions in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Brazil, among which Under Secretary for Asian Affairs and Multi-Regional Mechanisms, Brazilian Sherpa to BRICS, Brazilian High-Level Officer for the Forum for East Asia Latin America Cooperation, Regional Coordinator for the South America Africa Forum and the South America Arabs Country Forum and Director General of the Department of European Affairs. Her Excellency holds a Master's Degree in International Relations and PhD in International Relations and Diplomacy. She is a published author with an extensive bibliography and speaks six languages. Ambassador Maria Eduloisa Fontenelle Reis has been recognized for her diplomatic achievements and excellence in the Foreign Service with Brazilian and Foreign Merit Awards. Her Excellency Mariam Aftab joined the Foreign Service of Pakistan in 1994. Before coming to Sofia, she served as Deputy Head of Mission of the Embassy of Pakistan in Berlin. Her other posting include Counselor at the Pakistan Permanent Mission to the United Nations in Geneva and at the Embassy of Pakistan in Beijing and Second Secretary at the Permanent Mission of Pakistan to the United Nations in New York. At the Foreign Ministry in Islamabad, she worked as Director General Africa, Director General Americas, Director USA, Director Kashmir, and Deputy Director United Nations. She holds a Master's Degree in International Relations from the University of Sussex. Her Excellency Natasha Bergil completed legal studies first at the Faculty of Law in Ljubljana and later at the Harvard Law University. She entered the Slovenian diplomatic service 
as an attaché at the Embassy of the Republic of Slovenia in Turkey. She had two foreign postings in Austria and Hungary. Before being posted to Austria, Her Excellency headed the Visa Working Party in Brussels during the first presidency of Slovenia to the European Council. In Hungary, she acted already as a deputy chief of mission. When returning to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Ljubljana, she was entrusted with the Human Rights Department. She was appointed as ambassador for the first time in 2022. The host state where she has been serving in the highest diplomatic title since then is the Republic of Bulgaria. Her Excellency Lina Omar is ambassador of the Republic of Iraq to Bulgaria, former minister plenipotentiary at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Baghdad, with an experience of more than 20 years in diplomacy and government. She is on a mission to empower women to service better in their duties as her belief. Education is the soul of developing any society. Her Excellency was one of the members of the first delegation of 20 Iraqi women in Washington for the conference, Building New Iraq, Women's Role in Reconstruction. She was recognized as one of the top Iraqi women leaders for democracy, women's rights and religious freedom in Iraq by the Independent Women's Forum in Washington. She is an active advocate to promote the important changing role of women in the new era of peace and democracy in the world. She has lectured and delivered speeches to national and international audiences about the constitutional and security issues women face in the region. She has been quoted as an authority of these topics by the Washington Post, the Washington Times, and participated in TV discussions on the future of Iraq and the Middle East. Our last topic is the power of women in sport. Regarding the International Olympic Committee, fostering gender equality and strengthening women's empowerment in and through sport is also at the core of the mission of IOC. Could you share with us some good examples regarding the involvement of the women in the sports movement? For a nation of 2 million, the number of world-class athletes ranks Slovenia to the second place worldwide. Let's start with the ambassador of Slovenia. What is the situation regarding the women? <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. indeed, um, we are really a crazy sport nation. And <laughs> primarily, I would say, because we have so many natural circumstances that enabled us uh, um, to uh, pursue different sport activities professionally, and non-professionally. So in uh, Slovenia there have always been many uh, top world-class uh, female athletes. I can name so many so that I don't want to uh, make uh, any injustice to any mm -hmm. of them. But uh, in this uh, field I would have to say because it is so close to the nation, um, the circumstances and the um, uh, the circumstances of training, of pursuing career, again, uh, starting from the youth, from the very young age, has been pretty much very well balanced. Mm -hmm. We are again coming to um, uh, to the situation of uh, a woman when uh, there is a need of a family or a wish for a family that um, again we have uh, a trend where many of our women female colleagues uh, stop pursuing their career or they choose not to have a family or to have it later on but of course um, having a family somehow also contradicts with a top uh, top uh, sports or athlete career mm -hmm. so basically um, in this regard i would have to say that women athletes in Slovenia have always been able to give the best for us, for our nation, uh, and then I would say uh, at a later stage they have decided to devote themselves to the, fa to the family as well. Which are your favorite sports in Slovenia? 
Um, of course, I will start with skiing. Uh, this is the one which is the most uh, favorite uh, one. Um, I think that everyone still knows how to ski, even though the natural circumstances are getting less and less favorable in this regard. Skiing, um, uh, climbing, um, mountaineering, uh, these outdoor activities, I would say, are really close to uh, Tower Nation and to me as well, personally. Yes, thank you, Your Excellency. And talking about climbing, Pakistan is the other brilliant example of the women's inclusiveness in the sports movement. Please, Your Excellency. Yes, uh, again, sports has be, have been a field that have been uh, traditionally dominated by men. But uh, more and more Pakistani women are uh, getting into sports. And of course, the conventional sports, cricket, hockey, tennis, um, uh, sort of football. But as you mentioned, uh, more unconventional sports also like mountaineering. And uh, just recently, we have a, a young woman who is a, a mountaineer, Samina Beg, and she um, climbed the K2. So she, I think, is, 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 a, is a wonderful example of uh, young women trying new and maybe unconventional um, yes. sports in Pakistan. Um, and, uh, and I think that, uh, that that is indeed very inspirational um, for other women who want to follow, <coughs> follow in her footsteps. So I hope to see more of Samina and more people like her and see Pakistani women shine in, in all kinds of sports, traditional sports, and maybe also the sort of more non-traditional sports. And I think this young lady also climbed Everest. Yes. 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 <clears throat> Thank you, Your Excellency. For the first time in Brazilian history, the Minister of Sport is a woman. Please, Your Excellency. Yes, <laughs> first time, uh, and we are very proud of that. And um, allow me to talk about first time to pay tribute to our first minister of sports in Brazil, who was Pele, appointed uh, yeah. in 1995. He recently passed away, so I would very much like to pay tribute to this um, athlete uh, of uh, world uh, uh, known through all over the world maybe the the best uh, uh, ambassador of brazil we ever had Maria, um, also Ersan Sina in car racing yes uh, car racing Ayrton Senna yes unfortunately so young yes, unfortunately but uh, we are very pleased to see that uh, gradually a greater number of women are participating in all kinds of sports in Brazil uh, and today um, repeating again uh, what uh, President Lula's policy has been to appoint as many women as possible mm -hmm. to um, ministerial positions he decided to appoint Anna Moser as our the first woman minister of sports in Brazil she is a remarkable volleyball player. She is an Olympic champion. And uh, she has been very active in stimulating not only traditional, the, a growing number of women in traditional sports, but also in uh, new sports like skateboarding. Uh, the world champion today is a, a, a girl. I can say it's a woman because she's only 14 and uh, she's already a world champion. But uh, we have uh, had uh, in the past uh, two decades a growing number of women, not only in volleyball, in football. Brazil has a very strong football, female football team, uh, but also in judo, in jiu-jitsu, karate. Um, um, sailing, uh, you know, all kinds of sports that our uh, national circumstances allow us uh, to do. Unfortunately, no, uh, no outstanding uh, snow skiers because we don't have this tradition, but we compensate in many other fields uh, of sports. Discussing the power of women in sport, I have to mention also that Morocco had a woman, a minister of sport, and this woman is the first Moroccan and the first woman from a Muslim-majority country who win an Olympic gold medal. 
Am I right, Your Excellency? Yes, you're right, uh, Dr. Ladinova. In fact, uh, it's, uh, her name is uh, Nawal Mutawakil. You see, she is the first uh, lady who had a um, uh, golden medal in the Olympic uh, you see, athletics in the 80s. And uh, at that time, uh, you see, women didn't reach the, this uh, top level of in, uh, in sport, especially not only in Morocco, but in uh, African and also in Arab and Muslim, uh, Muslim uh, countries. So at that time, when, when she got this uh, golden medal, um, our late king, Hassan II, the father of our uh, actual king, uh, His Majesty uh, Mohammed VI, Ask the families friendly, uh, those who ha who, ha who had um, baby girls just born, please call them Nawal, because it was something special. And from that time, uh, all uh, because she opened uh, like a big doors for other women in Morocco, in Arab. Uh, African and Muslim world. And from that time, more women got involved uh, in the, this high-level athletic competition. And uh, for instance, uh, uh, last year we had our uh, national uh, women football team who, f uh, who, who reached the, the second place at the uh, African level. And really? yes, uh, um, now uh, it was uh, the, the final the uh, competition the was against South football, Africa, yes. so South Africa won, mm -hmm. but they did very good uh, match uh, uh, for the process in the, all the matches, and they gained all the heart of Moroccan, of Arab, uh, Muslim, African countries, and now they will uh, compete in uh, uh, this year in uh, Austria and in New Zealand. Yes, they, they are uh, chosen to represent uh, Arab Africa. world uh, yeah, and Africa. Yes, oh. uh, our uh, women uh, team of football. And also, we now we have many ladies. We have one uh, who reached the Mount Everest also, mm -hmm. uh, cl mountain climber. She is very known, and many, many others. And we have also Samira Benani, who used to do to to do uh, car racing with men. She is the only woman in oh, Arab nice. and uh, Af uh, Africa to to do such uh, kind of sport. Uh, normally, it's uh, it's used to be uh, only the domain of uh, men. Uh, yeah. And also we have many athletics in uh, many other, uh, you see, uh, disciplines. So uh, I can say that uh, sport, in Morocco, uh, sport is the touch in uh, school. It's an uh, uh, obligatory discipline. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the kids have to, uh, to, to, to be present to these uh, uh, sport uh, courses. And also, uh, we, ha we had uh, very good um, uh, swimmers uh, yeah, at the top level. We had in many uh, areas. And the women uh, sport is uh, in good uh, health and in, in good, in good sh shape, I think. Thank you. According to Her Excellency Lynn Omar, the Iraqi government is now seeking to raise the level of women's sport through scientific planning. It's regarding your topic, Your Excellency. Yeah, besides uh, all the other um, areas uh, that are developing in Iraq, uh, it's a sport. And uh, the government is um, helping in many ways to uh, uh, to support in this area from school to universities to uh, even the Minister of uh, Sports that also he was himself one of the champion. Uh, yes, so uh, we are very lucky to have him. And uh, so the main sport in Iraq is the football. <laughs> And everybody, you see, even in the streets, the kids playing. Arab and, uh, world. Yeah, the Arab world. So uh, I must say, it's this area is moving slow, but um, there are a lot of, uh, you know, uh, input to this area, and um, so uh, there's a huge interest from people for that, and especially women. Um, we have new sports that we didn't have before, like horseback riding, uh -huh. uh, yeah. swimming. Um, you know, like many other things that basketball, um, these are that it was not there the past 20 years. Uh, and I see that when my, with my last trip to Iraq uh, was just two weeks ago, I was interested to see like, uh, you know, uh, on my way from airport to my city, I see the horseback 
uh, like training uh, areas. It's like, wow, that was like for me huge, <laughs> uh, especially my city in the Kurdish area in the north. We have like, we are like Sofia for surrounded by mountains. We have the hiking, yes, but uh, the horseback uh, riding was like uh, something new for me to see. Uh, yes, we see it in the south. Um, so I think it's moving, it's slow, but I, I, I expect it's something good in the future. Promising. Yes. Yeah, promising. <laughs> promising, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Your Excellencies. Thank you to you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. to young women is believe in yourselves because yeah. if you can dream it you can do it thank you yeah.